Hello everyone, my name is Matt Hayes and I'm a research assistant in the University Museum of Zoology in Cambridge. I study butterflies, so today I want to talk to you about some of their key features, some of the most common species that you are like to see around you, and also then give you some hints and tips as to how you can support butterflies where you live. If you are only just beginning to look at some of the wildlife that lives around you and you're new to this, then butterflies are a perfect group to get started with. There's only around 60 species in the UK, as opposed to about two and a half thousand species of moths. So with butterflies, there's not too many different species to get to grips with. What's more, when trying to ID butterflies, it's often just a case of saying what you see. It can be quite simple. They are also a really great group uh, to go out and do field work with. They tend to really come out mainly in spring and summer between the hours of about 10 and 4 or on warm sunny days and they avoid rain. So it's perfect for you to go out and see them during this time and avoid all the bad weather. Let's start by taking a look at some key butterfly features. One thing that sets them apart is their wings. Their wings are large, opaque and often brightly coloured which is very different to the transparent see-through wings of most insects. Butterflies and moths belong to a group called Lepidoptera. This scientific Latin name translates as scaly-winged, with lepis or leopard meaning scale, and terra meaning wing. If you zoom in on a butterfly wing, you will see that it is indeed covered in thousands of tiny scales, many of which are brightly coloured and almost like pixels in a screen, build up the brilliant butterfly wing patterns we see. Another key butterfly feature is their mouth part. They have a long straw-like mouth that is usually curled up beneath their head. They then unfurl it to extend into a flower and drink its nectar. This straw-like mouth is called a proboscis. Now you know the key features of butterflies, you can start to split them up into different groups known as families. Let's take a look at these different groups and some of the common species you are likely to see. Some of the best known butterfly species belong to a group called the aristocrats and are members of the family Nymphalidae. These include species like the peacock butterfly with its characteristic eye spots, the small tortoise shell, the comma with its ragged outline and white comma mark on its underwing, the red admiral, and the painted lady. Many of the butterflies from this group will commonly visit gardens. Lots of butterflies in this group are also long lived, with adults of species like the peacock butterfly living nearly a full year. Whereas for most butterfly species, adults only live a few days or weeks and spend the rest of their time as caterpillars or pupae. The peacock, small tortoiseshell and comma butterfly adults can even survive the winter by hunkering down in sheltered locations like sheds or tree hollows. They do this to avoid the frost and wait out the bad weather. You can see a peacock butterfly doing this here. If you are careful not to disturb them, you can search for them in dark corners of outhouses during the winter months. The Red Admiral and Painted Lady do not usually survive our cold winters, but actually migrate huge distances to our shores every year. They can travel from as far south as the Mediterranean and Sub-Saharan Africa, respectively. With most species, adult numbers will dip once they have laid eggs and given rise to the next generation, but this means you can see their caterpillars instead, where they will be growing on selected food plants. Numbers of adult peacock butterflies tend to drop off a bit around mid-June for a month when the next generation is developing as caterpillars and the food plant they use are nettles and we've actually found some here. They gather together in large groups and they have this beautiful black colour with speckled white and they are lined with spines down the length of their body which helps protect them from predators. Peacock caterpillars aren't the only ones that use nettles. There's also small tortoise shells, red admirals and commas. And it's thought that actually about 40 other species of insects also feed on nettles. And then animals such as birds and frogs will eat the insects and also use nettles as a bit of a refuge themselves. 
So although for some people nettles have a reputation as maybe being a weed, they're actually one of the best things you can have in your garden for wildlife. So keeping a little sunny patch of nettles will go a long way. After a few weeks when the caterpillars have grown large enough, they will then form a chrysalis and undergo metamorphosis, transforming into a butterfly. I'll just put my thumb in frame here so you get a sense of scale for how big this beautifully camouflaged chrysalis really is. Let's take a look at another group of butterflies, the browns. This group also belongs to the family Nymphalidae, but for a long time was thought to be separate. These summer flying species are more commonly found in large areas of grasslands and meadows, but can still come and visit gardens. One of the most common species you are likely to see is the meadow brown, which can be found in grasslands across nearly all of the UK. If you go out searching for butterflies in meadows and grassland habitats, it can be a good idea to take a stick along with you to gently flush some of the species out. So things like meadow brown will be living in amongst grass tussocks and if you just gently wave the stick along in front of you then it can cause some of them to fly out for you to see. And actually I can see it has worked. There's a meadow brown just here which I'm gently flushing out with the stick. Not all of the browns live in grassland habitats though. As the name suggests, the speckled wood butterfly lives in dappled sunlight within woodland. Males are territorial and will defend patches of sunlight from intruders. If they encounter another male, they can perform amazing territorial spiral flights as the two males circle one another in competition. Another group of butterflies you will commonly see are the whites and yellows, which belong to the family Pyridae. The brimstone butterfly is another species that can overwinter as an adult, and is often the first butterfly species seen emerging in the spring. Males have a bright sulphur yellow colour, which is where it gets its name. As they emerge early and are long lived, brimstone butterflies benefit from having nectar sources available to them throughout the whole year. You can help by planting a range of flowers that bloom all the way through from spring to autumn so that no butterflies go hungry. Other common species of the family Pyridae are the small and large white butterflies. You may have heard them being called cabbage whites as their caterpillars use cabbages as their food plant. Sadly, this can cause conflict with vegetable growers, but why not grow a cabbage patch specifically for the butterflies to give them a safe place to lay their eggs? As the name suggests, the large white can grow a few centimetres larger than the small white and it has larger black markings on the edge of its wings. A final species of white butterfly to look out for is this one. Remember when I said you should just say what you see when identifying butterflies? Well, this butterfly has orange tips to its wings, so of course it's called an orange tip. This is a spring flying species that lays eggs on shaded garlic mustard. Females actually have black wing tips instead of orange, but both have beautiful green mossy underwings. Other butterflies you might see include those from the family Lycenidae, which contains the blues, coppers, and hair streaks. Two species you are most likely to come across are the common blue and the holly blue, which can look very similar on the wing. However, when they land, the holly blue only has pale powder blue on its underwings, and the common blue has patches of white and orange. Another difference is that the common blue tends to fly close to the ground, whereas holly blues more readily fly up over bushes and trees. The final group to keep an eye out for are the skippers from family Hesperidae. This is the group of butterflies most closely related to moths. They are small and have an erratic zigzagged flight. When they rest, many species of skipper also hold their wings halfway between open and closed. Common similar looking species include the small and large skipper. As the name suggests, the large skipper is bigger, with slightly more brown mixed in with the golden orange of the wings. You now have the tools to identify some of the most common butterfly species in the UK and have learnt some ways to give them a helping hand. Remember, planting flowers all year round for them to feed on is a great way to attract them to your garden and planting their caterpillar food plant will help the next generation.